Hello everyone, welcome to Tomorrow. While I was at the ISDC conference this year, I met two gentlemen who have a company called Space Division Inc. that recycles composite materials from aerospace companies. So check out this interview, we're we'll talking about bringing a little bit of space into your everyday life. Well, Jason, Ryan, thank you very much for sitting down and talking with us today. Uh, you guys have a very interesting project here where you guys are using recycled materials to manufacture all sorts of things. But first, I want to kind of find out how it is that you guys got uh, started in this and uh, what, what brought about the idea. When I was a freshman at the University of Southern California, I was the lead composites engineer in the rock propulsion lab. and. At the time, we were trying to track down some rolls of carbon fiber to use in the construction of our rockets, and they're pretty expensive. It's about $5,000 for a single roll, and so that exceeded our budget that we could spend on carbon at the time. So we were trying to track donations down. And we reached out to Boeing and a bunch of other companies, and eventually Boeing got back to us in about May of 2013, and they said, hey, we've got all this material that we're going to have to throw away. We're doing a freezer cleaning. You guys should come and see if there's anything you want to use. And we show up and they roll out 10 pallets of material, which we valued at over $500,000. And we were blown away. The guy told us, if you guys don't take this tomorrow, we're going to landfill all of it. And right there, I knew there was a huge problem in the aerospace industry with carbon fiber scrap disposal and a great opportunity to go and do something about it. And so uh, that summer and over the course of the next year, I worked on developing carbon fiber skateboards using this upcycled material. Wow. And uh, you guys actually brought some of those uh, skateboards with you today. Um, but first, uh, how was it that you found out about this and you got involved with the, with the project, Jason? So Ryder was at USC studying, uh, was put in contact with Greg. I don't remember exactly how, uh, how that introduction was made, but Dr. Autry, uh, um, one of our co-founders, a major investor, uh, and I were working at a healthcare software uh, uh, company. And so that was, uh, uh, back at the time, it was, I wasn't involved with skateboards or anything. Uh, it was, you know, software development. And if you would have told me at the time that you're going to go start, which is essentially a skateboard company, be like, yeah, okay, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> but then I found out what it's really, you know, really this huge problem that's out there. And um, you know, the the amount of waste is it's a waste of a valuable resource. Um, you know, it's filling up landfills. Millions of pounds of this go, uh, ten million just in aerospace go every year. And I just thought that, that was, um, you know, something that I wanted to get involved with, trying to, you know, help solve this problem. Wow, very cool. Um, and so, uh, with this materials, are you guys just uh, um, doing rapid port, or are you guys doing um, uh, like a some sort of system to, to 3D print some of these some of these materials? So the material we collect comes straight off of the production line. It's mostly trim scrap. Uh, which is a carbon fiber fabric that's pre-infused with a resin system. And that resin system is activated with heat and then uh, compacted with pressure in order to form the solid material that most people know as carbon fiber. And it's really a carbon fiber reinforced plastic. And so in order to turn it from that fabric into the, the solid carbon fiber that everybody knows, we use a hot press. And we hold it under heat and pressure for the recommended cure cycle and then out comes whatever product we need to make. Very cool, very cool. Well, show me some of the stuff that you guys have here. Obviously, you guys started, was it first with the skateboards, or what was right. it a little bit different? Yeah, Wright had uh, the uh, first skateboard made before I got involved um, that was really amazing. Um, give him a chance to tell you about it. Uh, but when I saw it, what he was able to do just with the resources that he had at uh, the Rocket Lab, and. Um, it just really was like a, an awesome show of like ingenuity and being able to like really start this up on a you know a student budget and that that kind of like you know, dorm room startup mentality getting it done. So yeah, in 2015 we launched our first skateboard, the Aileron, on Kickstarter, and it was pretty exciting for us. It started taking off, and we were actually going to be working with a manufacturing partner who was going to. Uh, make the boards for us. We would bring them the material and work with them to figure out a process in order to manufacture the boards. And about $20,000 into our campaign, he calls us up and says, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to make these boards for you anymore. But fortunately, our campaign was so successful that it allowed us to actually go and get our own facility and start manufacturing the boards ourselves, which in turn helped us move a lot faster and farther than we thought we would right away. Wow. 
Now, um, some of your boards uh, have electric motors to them. How did that come about? So after we launched uh, our second Kickstarter, the Rover, there was a company in Singapore called Arcboards that reached out to us. And they had seen the aileron and they had seen the Rover and they knew about the message that we have, which is trying to save carbon fiber from the landfill. And they really enjoyed the way that we uh, presented our boards and said, it would be awesome if you guys would sell us boards that we could put electric units on. So we shipped about 125 boards up to Singapore uh, that they took and then converted into their electric skateboards. It's a, actually a different, uh, slightly different shape of variant and we had additional holes so they can mount their electronics to it. Um, but it's essentially the, it's that collaboration. Very cool. Um, now, are you guys putting yourselves out as more of like a supplier or a contractor or are you guys selling some of the, the, um, the products that you guys have manufactured? So up until about 2016 we were selling mostly just skateboards. And then, right at the start of uh, 2017, we started working on a larger business-to-business -business contract manufacturing portion. And then in 2018, we launched the Space Division Inc., which focuses on office furniture and other cool carbon products that we uh, got really inspired to build just in our office. And so now our office is full of carbon fiber desks and monitor risers and laptop stands. Uh, and that is kind of the inspiration that pushed us to uh, go and build the Space Division, which we just launched on Kickstarter right now. Um, and what is the yeah. goal of Space Division? Are you guys uh, are actually trying to make uh, aerospace uh, products or, uh, other than just uh, office materials? What, what's the goal of Space Division? So the really, really the reason that we started all of this, and Space Division in particular, is to bring a little bit of space to everybody, because this material is so ridiculously expensive to go out and buy that it can't be used in a lot of applications and so what we were able to do with the Space Division Elevated Materials and 121C is bring these products to customers and then connect them with the space industry because what we're really here to do is help promote the space industry and move the industry forward as a whole. Awesome. Um, so uh, given um, if you had an ideal situation where, where funds were an issue um, what sort of, of uh, um, companies or, or, or products would you like to collaborate on? Um, we're finding that's, that's a good question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would personally, just as a, a fun project, I would love to make a nice set of carbon fiber skis. So working with someone like Solomon or K2 uh, would be super awesome. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we'd like to get into the case manufacturing industry working with companies like Pelican uh, to make cases for camera equipment. Um, oh, but the list goes on. Yeah, it's, it, you could build a pretty fun list with this material because of, I mean, it's used in aerospace because it is so amazing, uh, technically um, uh, advanced. And so it, that's why we thought it was a shame. Companies that really might have products that could use this type of material but find it way too expensive to even pursue. Um, it's really, for us, the brands are to raise awareness that there's this new class of material that we can provide that is absolutely that aerospace grade, pre pride carbon fiber in like, for instance, these uh, commodity, or excuse me, uh, you know, flat stock sizes of various thicknesses and weave patterns that we can provide different sizes. Um, and we really want to work with companies, kind of like what you just said, where we can kind of come in and, and show what's possible as what really the products that we've created uh, beyond just wanting to make sure anybody who's a space enthusiast can literally hold a piece of this technology that came off of one of those rocket lines, showing what's actually possible to create with the material as well. And it really does scratch the surface um, as far as the capabilities of what we can expand to in the future uh, as we grow. What's pretty inspiring for me is that a lot of people reach out to us with ideas that we had never even thought of. Mm -hmm. um, it had been on my mind a little bit, but some place that we're finding some traction is with the drone industry. Customers will send us a part file or a DXF file, which is basically just a drawing of what they want cut out, and then we'll take it to our CNC equipment and make their parts, and we can turn around and ship them iteration after iteration as they develop their racing drones to you know, be the fastest and the best out there. Mm -hmm. 
Very cool. It's kind of the blessing of really that manufacturing partner get you know having their own um, situation they, they needed to focus on and, and essentially turning over what they had developed or what we developed together for us to move forward because it allowed us to kind of really hone in on this idea of not just creating a company and a skateboard uh, a brand but you know this whole manufacturing capability we've brought our in-house water jet cutting and composites are actually um, you know much more difficult um, as Ryan would would attest to, to work with uh, than you know a metal or uh, other things that water jet is used for for us to be able to really tune that process and be able to then bring that capability to other companies is is really fun um, well we have a pretty good idea of why um, you're doing this um, but is there anything else that uh, uh, is inspiring or another goal that you have in order to um, to be recycling these materials that you hope will have a, a larger effect in the industry so what's kind of um, I'd say what's exciting for us is there's about we estimate there's about 10 million pounds of carbon fiber going into the landfill just from the aerospace industry every year and with the aluminum industry and the plastic bottle industry and the steel industry, there's an entirely established supply chain for this material to go through. There's a guy who goes and collects it, and then it gets brought to a processing facility where it's turned into pellets or ingots, and then somebody buys that and converts it into a product, and then somebody buys that product and sells it to a customer, and none of that exists for the carbon fiber industry. So our mission really is to develop an entire industry around carbon fiber recycling to educate people about how they can use it, uh, figure out how to manufacture it in unconventional ways to bring the costs down, uh, reuse stuff that people thought was just trash and turn something that's an incredibly valuable resource into something that's usable again. Wow, very cool. Yeah, and what he was saying, or actually I think we, you've also mentioned about um, you know the maker movement, um, us being able to really bring down the cost uh, so far that we have by really um, tooling up ourselves, building, Ryan designing the presses that are required, his, you know, taking his his knowledge uh, of, of composites and kind of bringing that down to a level that allows us to just even enter this market by um, uh, you know the the custom built presses, the hand built presses, and uh, with with me, I'm really excited about the the way that we are able to uh, inexpensively uh, monitor those pressings and really develop like what's considered Internet of Things for um, manufacturing um, tool, and then allow that us to then share that with our partners, the people that we um, uh, work with, to really just expand and grow as quickly as possible. Um, I think that's pretty exciting for me. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. Where can people find out more information about you guys and about this product in general? The best place to see <laughs> Kickstarter. The, <laughs> Kickstarter. The best place to see our current progress is on our Kickstarter, Space Division Inc. Uh, if you go to Kickstarter and you search for Space Division Inc., it will come right up, top result. We launched the Space Office Fleet. And how long, uh, how long is that campaign running? We started it with 45 days about two weeks ago, so it's going to end right around the end of June. Okay. All right. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for uh, sitting down and talking with us today, and uh, um, hopefully uh, you'll have quite a few more interesting people uh, with cool ideas, or at least want to get some. I definitely want to get a couple of these skateboards. So thank you very much for sitting down and talking with us today. Thank you. Yeah, and we do hope that anybody who has a, an idea, a concept, where they just could use the carbon fiber for its properties or its look or it, um, its connection to space or really to help us solve this environmental problem. We don't want to hear from anybody. Or investors. Or investors. <laughs> or investors. <laughs> or investors. Yeah. And we're also <laughs> ra raising funds through crowdfunded equity on Start Engine and selling on Amazon Prime and all those great things you have to do with a startup. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you again. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.